short animated video explains the basic concept of another statistical tool known as ANOVA with help of some relevant examples. In this video, I've talked about what is ANOVA, different types of ANOVA, and some practical examples to explain this concept better. So please don't go anywhere else. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy this video. So what is ANOVA? ANOVA stands for Analysis of Variance. It was developed by Ronald Fisher. ANOVA enables us to test for significance of difference among more than two sample means. It is basically an extension of t-test and allow us to move beyond just comparing two population means. When we only have two samples, t-test and ANOVA will give you same results. However, using a t-test would not be reliable in case when there are more than two samples. If we conduct multiple t-tests for comparing more than two samples, it would have a compounding effect on the error rate which will lead to higher type 1 error alpha than the alpha set for each t-test. That is why ANOVA is important over t-test. So ANOVA are basically are of two types, one-way ANOVA and two-way ANOVA. So what is the difference between these two? So one-way ANOVA. So one-way ANOVA talks about there is only one factor or independent variable in one-way ANOVA. And it compares three or more levels of one factor. While two-way ANOVA talks about it is basically extension of one-way ANOVA. And more than one factor or independent variable is there. It compares the effect of multiple levels of two factors. And the test statistics in ANOVA is F-test. So now we look at some assumptions for ANOVA. The population from where the sample is drawn should follow a normal distribution. The samples have been selected randomly and independently. Each group should have a common variance and data are independent. These are some of the assumptions while we work on ANOVA. Null hypothesis for ANOVA says the mean for all the groups are same or equal. So H naught, that is mu1 is equal to mu2 is equal to mu3, so on up to mu n, and mu denotes the mean. An alternate hypothesis would be that the mean are different for at least one group of pair. So H1, that is alternate hypothesis, denotes mu1 is not equal to mu2 is not equal to mu3, so on up to mu n. If any of the group mean is significantly different from the overall mean, then the null hypothesis is rejected. But here, we are comparing more than two means. But if you only want to compare two groups of mean, just use the t-test here. ANOVA uses the f-test for statistical significance. The f-test comprises the variance in each group mean from overall group variance. That is, variance between divided by variance within. So if the variance within group is smaller than the variance between groups, the f-test will find a higher f-value. Therefore, likelihood that the difference observed is real and not due to chance. Now let us see what's the difference between variance between and variance within. Suppose you want to compare three sample means x1, x2 and x3 to see if there is any difference exists among them. So question here is whether they all are coming from same population or not, or one mean is slightly offset from other two. So variance around or variance within distribution is an internal spread or variation of each distribution like this. That is variance within or variance around. We'll take again the three mains mu1, mu2, mu3 and plot it or variability among or between plot in on the normal curve to see what is the distance of each mean from the overall mean here. So in this case, a null hypothesis would be mu1 is equal to mu2 is equal to mu3. An alternate would be either mu1 is not equal to mu2 or not equal to mu3. So that is how we calculate variance among and between here. ANOVA is basically a ratio of variance between divided by variance within. The total variance is the sum of variance between plus variance within. If variance between by variance within ratio is greater than or equal to 1, 
we reject the null hypothesis. If it is less than one, we fail to reject null hypothesis. If it is equal to one, again, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So what does this state? That is, if the between group variation is high relative to within group variation, then the F statistics of ANOVA will be higher and the corresponding P value will be lower, which makes it more likely that we reject the null hypothesis that the group mean are equal. The larger F statistics, the greater the variation between the group means relative to the variation within the groups. Let's take an example. We want to see if three different study methods can lead to different mean exam scores or not. To test this, we will select 30 students and randomly assign 10 each to use a different studying method. We'll solve this example using two different methods. So let's look at method number one. In this case, uh, we'll use the method one. So this is our data. We have method A, B, and C. Uh, this is our group mean at the bottom 8.7, 8.6, and 8.5 for method A, B, and C respectively. And the overall mean is the average of 8.7, 8.6, and 8.5, which comes to 8.6. Now we'll first calculate the between group variation, which is like 10, which is the total number of quantity for into 8.7, that is the group mean of A, minus 8.6, the overall mean square. Then for group method B, we'll have 10 into 8.6 minus 8.6 ka whole square plus 10 into 8.5, the group mean from C minus the overall mean square. This is where we get between group variation as 0.2. Now we need to calculate within group variation. That is summation of x i j minus x j square. Where x no summation, x i j is the ith observation in the jth group and x i is the mean of j group. So method A we can create within group variation. So that is 10 minus 8.7. 8.7 is a group mean of method A square. Now we'll subtract each value from their group mean. So 10 minus 8.7 square plus 9 of minus 8.7 square plus 8. So on, we'll get for all the values for 10 and it comes to 6.6. .6. Similarly, we will do it for method B and method C as well. Now, we need to sum this all values which, which we have received for method A, B, and C. That is your total group variation 6.6, 10.9, and 10.5, which comes to 28. Now you remember these two values between group variation was 0.2, and within group variation is coming as 28. Now we'll put these values in this formula variance between and variance within. So we get 0 0.2 divided by 28, which is 0.0071 which is less than 1 so we fail to reject the null hypothesis as per the initial assessment that is mean are very close to overall mean and the distribution overlap is hard to distinguish that is the analysis that we have now we'll use the second method using f table so in this case uh, if my f critical is greater than f stats we fail to reject the null hypothesis if f critical is less than f stats we reject the null hypothesis in our case, assuming that uh, alpha or level of significance is 0.05, we can create F stats, which is like variance between the variance within, which is like what we have calculated, which comes to 0.0071. F critical value, which is here, after which everything we have to reject the null hypothesis. So, and if it falls in this region, we fail to reject. F critical is the numerator degree of freedom divided by denominator degree of freedom. And we have to look into the F table. But before that, the numerator degree of freedom is number of samples minus one. So number of samples where we have three. So three minus one is two. And the denominator degree of freedom is the total number of values minus three. And it comes like uh, 30 minus three is 27. We look at this value of F, two and 27 critical value from table. We'll look at how we get 3.35. So this is the uh, numerator degree of freedom. And this is the denominator degree of freedom. And we get a common value as 3.35 at the intersection. So that is why in, in our case, F critical, that is 3.35 is greater than F stat, that is 0 0.0071. So we fail to reject the null hypothesis here. Now let us understand the, all the sources of variation here. So we have total variation SST, uh, which is further bifurcated into between variation, which is SSC, and within variation SSE. 
and s is denote the sum of square which reflects the variation and depends on sample size degree of freedom is the number of populations average being compared and mean sum of square ms is the ss adjusted by degree of freedom so ms can be compared with each other like sum of square by degree of freedom so ANOVA involves calculation and interpretation of number of parameters which are summarized in this table. This is a typical one-way ANOVA table. So the row one relates to variation between the mean of the group. The values are almost always either referred to as between group or are identified by grouping factors. The row two refers to variation within each group meaning the sample standard deviation for each group as compared to overall performance of the other group members and the row 3 refers to total variation under the column section of ANOVA table we have following subjects like sum of squares uh, degree of freedom mean square f ratio and p value so for degree of freedom they are different groups therefore a minus 1 is the first degree of freedom for between group effects and for degree of freedom for within group it is equal to a into n minus 1 right for and total would be if you add both these for sum of square uh, this is the term which are cal uh, calculated by adding the series of square error terms so for between variation it is ssb for error it is sse that is within variation and total would be if you add both these two mean square are the key terms in classical ANOVA. It is calculated by mean square between for between it is like SSB divided by degree of freedom A minus 1. Similarly for MSE would be SSE divided by A into N minus 1. And then F ratio would be the ratio of MS between variation divided by MS error or within variation. And correspondingly we will calculate the P value. So if all the mean are equal, the two mean squares should also be not significantly different and hence the H0 is not true. That is one way in our table for you. So if you are still watching this video, let's have a quick quiz. So first question, how is the significance of ANOVA test determined by calculating Z statistics, by calculating the T statistics, by calculating F statistics or by calculating the chi scale statistics. Second question The analysis of variance is a statistical method of comparing the several populations, mean, variance, standard deviation, or none of above. Final question The dash sum of square measures the variability of observed values around their respective treatments. Error, total, or treatment, or interaction. You can leave your answers in the comment section below.